Hello, welcome to BBTV. This is BBTV Beatrice. Um, this Tuesday, I just have it in my heart to share with us what has been in my heart and what I've listed out among the topics I'll be talking about. Remember, we, we I come here sometimes to discuss marriage and relationship with us. So today I'm going to be discussing to discussing with us about marriage. Okay, and today's topic is over familiarity in marriage over familiarity in marriage you know before you get married you know they you know they ah you want to please this person you want to please you want to do everything to make sure the person is not angry and all that that's what people display and when you now get married you now have to you now start finding out some there be some weaknesses in the other person or and that's, ah, i didn't know this how this person is or you know like that that's some of us forgetting in our minds that we are all human. <laughs> we are all human. We, we, we are carrying this body, that the Spirit of God is in us. So in order to overcome those things, those weaknesses that you see in your spouse, in order to overcome those things that you, uh, that you feel ah, are not okay, you need the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, marriage will not work. I'm telling you, without the Spirit of God, because sometimes you want to react with the way you feel. You want to do the things with the way you, you know, your your heart is boiling. But no, you know, the Bible says those that walk in the flesh cannot please God. <laughs> they cannot please God until you walk in the spirit. That's the only way you can please God. So we, we can, in marriage, we can step on each, other, each other's toes. And those, that's why uh, I wrote on, on my Facebook page some time ago that, if you are not ready to forgive, if you don't know how to forgive, if you have not cultivated the habit of forgiving people, forget about getting married. Because in marriage, you will step on each other's toes. So are you telling me you are going to keep holding those things in, the, in your heart against your spouse? So today, I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm just going to discuss, I want us to discuss about over-familiarity in marriage. And what is over-familiarity in the dictionary? Over-familiarity is seen as uh, exceedingly common or ordinary. Hmm? Exceedingly common or ordinary. Something that is to the extreme, ordinary and common. Something is commonalized. Something you just say ordinary. You know, some of us see our spouse as I have known him for, I've known her for you know, the person I used to know. No. No, you have to place value. You have to place value on your spouse, especially the women. You have to place value on your husband. It's very important. See, let me tell you. Some women say, ah, it's the only me that will not be showing him love. No. Show him respect. You don't need to show your husband love. Just show him respect. And what is the respect? The respect is the love you're showing him. That's what the Bible defines. Show him respect. Give him that respect. When you give him respect, there's no way, no matter how wicked that man is, there's no way he will not reciprocate that love. So remember I said we're going to be talking about over-familiarity in marriage. And I said over-familiarity is seen as exceedingly uh, common or ordinary. Okay, another definition for it is unduly forward. Unduly forward. Because you've known this man for a long time. You've known this man for a long time. Before they even finish saying something, you finish, you help them to finish it. Unduly forward. Okay, that's offensively presumptuous. You're just, you're on the offensive side, you know? You're offensively presu pre uh, presumptuous. You always want to help the person to finish what the person wants to say. Without even knowing what the person has is in his or her heart. No matter how long you have stayed with the person. So it's very important that we watch out for these signs. Me that is coming to talk to you about it. Am I perfect? No. I'm working on ourselves. Remember my last one of the videos I talked about marriage. With marriage is work. I talked a lot there. If you have not watched that video, please on this channel. It is titled Marriage is Work. Just listen to it. Okay, so today we're going to be discussing over-familiarity in marriage. And I've defined what over-familiarity is. Mm -hmm. I said over-familiarity is seen as um, exceedingly common or ordinary. Something you just commonize. You just see, it's normal, ordinary. A lot of us have to commonize our spouse. It's wrong. In the eyes of God, it's wrong. And then the other definition is unduly forward. Unduly forward. Not allowing the person to finish what he wants to say. Or she wants to say, you just help the person to finish this, you know? Unduly forward or brash, you are too brash in, 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 in approaching somebody. You are offensively presumptuous, always trying to let the person know you know what the person wants to say. It's wrong. Okay? So, um, 
That's what I want. So today I'm going to be sharing with us signs, signs of overfamiliarity in marriage, signs of overfamiliarity in marriage. Now, number one sign is how you talk to your spouse is important. How do you talk to your husband? How do you talk to your wife? How you talk to your spouse is very important. You know, some of us have what we call, well, you know, in the if in the university we have what we call, what we call carryover. When you fail a course, it's called as carryover, which means you have to wait an extra year to write that course again. You they will, you definitely go to the, the other level if you pass other courses. But if you fail a particular course, you have to wait extra year. You continue with your education anyway, but you have to wait extra year to write that course. You must, you must pass that course. If you don't pass that course, you will not graduate. So that's how it is. Some of us have carried some kind of attitude from our father's house, from our mother's house. Some of us, some of us have carried some kind of attitude from where we are coming from, where we grew up from, into our marriage. And those are the things we need to watch out for. It's very important. We need to watch out for this. So today I'm going to discuss with you signs of overfamiliarity in marriage. Number one, how do you talk to your spouse? How do you talk to your spouse? I would like to read from the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. We are all learning. I'm also learning too. Whenever I read the word of God, I apply it to my life. And I begin to say, oh, Spirit, help me. Help me to apply this to my life. So that's why I came to share. That's why I'm here to share it with you today. To also look out for these signs and tame them. Look out for these signs and manage them in your marriage, okay? Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, let your speech be always with grace. Let your speech be always with grace. Season with salt. You know, when you prepare, your, I'm talking to married people today, even if you are not married, these are the things you need to know before you get into marriage. It's very important. It's even better I learn from the mistakes of others than for me learning from my mistakes. Some mistakes, you can't recover from it. So, let your speech always be with grace. Season with salt. When you cook without adding salt, is it tasty? Is it tasteful? Do you really get the taste of that food, of that meal? No. You have to add salt. No matter how little, you, you must add a pinch of salt to that food you're cooking to get a good taste of it. So the Bible says, let your speech always be with grace. 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 Grace is speaking the word of God with wisdom. Grace is speaking words with wisdom, not talking like any other person. See, woman, you don't have to be the other woman you admire. You must not be like the person. It's very important. You are unique in your own way. Man, you are unique in your way. You must not talk the other way the other person is talking. You are unique and you must find your uniqueness in God's word. The Bible says, let your word always be seasoned with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. That you may know, Colossians 4 verse 6, let your words be seasoned, let your speech be always with grace and be seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer every man. Let me put it in the way I would like to define it with our topic today. Let your word always be grace and seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer your spouse. In marriage, it's very important. Knowing how to answer your spouse in that marriage. So, how you talk to your spouse is important. We are, we, we are to look out for this. It's very important. We are to look out for this. Tell yourself the truth. And learn to talk well. Tell yourself the truth. If you didn't talk to your spouse well, maybe he brought us something or he just said something and you reacted harshly based on your feeling or whatever. It's not wrong to go back and say, I'm sorry. I, I reacted wrongly. I'm sorry. It's not wrong. If you don't know how to apologize to your, to your spouse where you are wrong, you are a proud person. And the Bible says God resists the proud. Likewise, how you relate with people outside. If you've wronged somebody, tell the person, I'm sorry. Let it go. Even if, when the person refuses to forgive you, just make sure you are moving with your life. Make sure you have settled it. I'm sorry. I did it or I, I reacted like this to you. I'm sorry. The same thing applies to us in our marriage. You say something wrong to your spouse and you know it is wrong. Apologize. There's nothing wrong with it. Apologize, oh Lord, honey, I'm sorry. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Whatever you call your husband or your spouse, I'm sorry. I, I, I reacted as she. I'm sorry. So it's very important. Number two, remember one, how you talk to your spouse is very important. Number two, your respond tone. Okay. Your respond tone. Some of us are, is very important. I don't want to hear some people's tone of replying their spouse is, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. I don't know the words to use. 
your response tone is very important. How do you respond? How do you respond? Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. If you want to be a wise person, read the book of Proverbs. I've read the book of Proverbs over and all over. I can't even count. I started reading the book of, book of Proverbs from my secondary school days. Long, long time ago, 20-something years ago. Learn how to read, study the book of Proverbs. You, the wisdom will enter you. Praise God. The book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1 to 2. It says, A short answer turneth away wrath. Soft. Soft answer turneth away wrath. Sometimes, yes, the things that maybe the person, your spouse have done to you or you are just boiling, you are just angry. Please don't react the way you are boiling. Walk with the Spirit of God. When you react the way your feeling is telling you, you are not walking in the Spirit. You are walking in the flesh. And you cannot please God. And if you cannot please God, you cannot please your spouse. So, Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1 says, Soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words, grievous you see, I was trying to look for the word of that own. I was trying to explain. The Bible also call it grievous word. Grievous. Grievous words stir up anger. Anger. It stirs up anger. Words are grievous. Some of us, the way we speak to our spouse is like the person should go and carry a knife and stab him or herself to death. Some of our words are very, are very, very grievous. Some of our words are very dangerous. Watch your words, watch your tone. Your response tone is very important. Soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Verse 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. May you not be that foolish person in Jesus' name. Amen. The mouth of the fool poureth out foolishness, but the tongue of the wise, what? It does what? It uses with knowledge, all right? Knowledge. So learn how to answer your spouse rightly. It's very important. Learn how to answer your spouse rightly. Learn. You are not married, you are watching this video. Please learn from this before you get into that marriage. Words are very important. My mom used to tell us then that words are like eggs. You are hold, I'm holding an egg in my hand. And I just leave it to fall to the ground. When it falls, do you think I can gather that egg again? It's already shattered. That's how words are. That's how words are we. When you are holding a word in your mouth, and the devil is telling you, spit it out, say it out, keep it, don't speak it all. Because when that word comes out, you can never retrieve it again. Yes, you go back to your spouse, oh, I mean, I'm sorry. I know I said it, I'm sorry. But be careful. Because even if you tell, that your, even if you tell your spouse you are sorry, the devil will continue to play on that word. That you have spoken to in that wrong word, and the Bible calls this foolishness. So let's be wise, okay? That's the number two. Number one is how you talk to your spouse is important. Number two is your response tone. Your tone is very important, okay? And number three is belittling, belittling your spouse, belittling your spouse. A lot of people you belittle your spouse. It's possible he's not up to your educational standard. It's possible he's not as knowledgeable as you are. It's possible there's something the person is struggling with, and you belittle that man, you belittle that woman. It's wrong. It's wrong. Belittling somebody is looking down at someone. It's saying somebody is not up to your level. And sometimes some of us carry this attitude from our fathers as to our marriage. You look down your younger ones, you look down your elder ones, you look down your parents, and you carry it to your home. To your home. So, it is wrong. Never you belittle you, your spouse. And how do you do this? Start from, those of you listening to me that are not yet married, start from people you relate with, from your house, your friends. Never you look down anybody. Never. Because that person you're looking down, <laughs> if God shows you where God is taking that person to, you will have to respect that person. No. So why will you want God to raise that person before you respect the person? Why not just keep the person that you respect now? Okay? Some of us feel we uh, people that we are older than we must respect us. I'm sorry. I respect people that are older than. And I respect them because respect, you don't you don't buy respect. You don't ask for respect. Respect is end. You earn respect. You earn it. And that you want it. When, you, when you are working, you earn money, isn't it? You are working because you earn it. So what do you do? You do things that will make people to respect you. You do things that will make people to respect you. 
That's why I respect. That's why I say respect is king. It's not a title. Okay? So your rest your responsibility in your husband. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. We are reading a lot of scriptures today, you know, because it is the word of God that gives us wisdom. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly, more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Not to think of yourself so highly. Your spouse is nothing before you. Wife, be watchful. Husbands, please, let's learn not to belittle our spouse. And I said this character, this attitude, some more from people bring it from their father's house. From wherever they grew up, even their marriage. They begin to look down people. Look down their husbands, look down their husband's people, look down, even look down people around them. It's a spirit of pride. And it's not good. The Bible says, God resist the proud. Don't be proud. Okay, that's number three. That's number three. Deleting your spouse is wrong in marriage. Very wrong. Number four is protect your spouse's weaknesses. Protect your spouse's weaknesses is very important. Protect your spouse's weaknesses. Yes, remember I said before you got married, you don't really know this person. Now you are married one year, two years, three years, four years. You know the weakness of this man. You know the weakness of this woman. And some of us capitalize on it, you know, to indirectly just continue to puncture the person's ego, puncture the person's, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, value. It's wrong. It's wrong. Okay? Protect your spouse's weaknesses. Now, let me tell us. Respect your spouse as you would respect your father and your mother. Respect your spouse as you would respect your father and your mother. When you were growing up in your father's house, did, have you ever stood up to stand against your dad and be talking to your dad while your dad is talking, you're talking? If you ever done that, repent. Because you bring the same thing into your marriage. Respect your husband. Protect your husband's or your wife's weaknesses. Protect. And I say respect your husband as you would respect your father and your mother. Okay? As you would respect your father and your mother. Another thing I want to give us is avoid people that like to discuss your spouse with you. Avoid people that love to discuss your spouse with you. My husband is a pastor. And I got to, you know, meet with people, we talk and all that. I've come across some people that just want to bring up, ah, your husband is very quiet. Uh, how do you cope? You're asking me <laughs> such a question? You think I just jump into the marriage? We had courtship. We, 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 we caught it before we got married. I was able to know he's kind of person. He's a quiet person and I respect that and I love it. When he wants to talk, he just say what he wants to say and he's done. Okay, so I don't know how the person would want me to start discussing my husband with her. Why? It's a lack of respect. If I bring my husband's topic before you, I'm discussing it, and I don't respect my husband. And it's wrong. And I can't do that. I walk over it. I watch it with all zeal. So respect your spouse as you would respect your husband. Avoid people that want to always be discussing your husband with you. Always be telling, ah, I saw your I saw your, your spouse. Could be your husband, could be your, could be your, your spouse. Ah, I saw your husband doing this. I saw your wife doing do that or doing this. Especially women. Be watchful. At home that you are playing with carelessly. God gave it to you to protect. With prayers and with your words. It was with your mouth. Avoid people that always want to be discussing your spouse with you. Telling you, ah, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this right. I've come a lot of, uh, across a lot of people like that. And when they are just saying it, I hush. I hush the discussion. I don't joke with it. I hush it and I change the topic. I change it. Is that I change the topic or if you need an answer, I give you there. I give you there. So, what you do, avoid people that want to be discussing your spouse with you. Except it's something good. Ah, yes, oh, I praise God for him. I thank God for my husband. I thank God for my wife. But in any way, just avoid it. Avoid it. Because some of them are not genuine. You bring those topic for you to discuss. Some of them are not genuine at all. Some of them, there's something they are looking for. So you have to be watchful. Okay, you have to be watchful. Make sure it's a no-go area for anyone to want to discuss about your spouse. 
Protect them and their weaknesses. Protect your spouse. Husband, protect your wife's weaknesses. Wife, especially today. Wives, protect your husband's weaknesses. If there's anything you don't like, go on your knees and pray. Holy Spirit, I pray. Help him to overcome this. If there's any weakness, Holy Spirit, I pray. Help her to overcome this. This is just what I just came to come to pray. Say with us today. You know, I've listed like four, 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 four signs. Then the last one is comparing, which is five. The five points, comparing. Comparing your spouse with the other persons. Comparing your spouse. Why will you compare? Why would you want to compare? See, when you know how to value your uniqueness, I'm not saying value your uniqueness in the way of looking down others. No, you are taking it the wrong way. That's not the way to value. If when you value your uniqueness, you value people's uniqueness. Like what I said in one of my videos, you can't love people without loving yourself. So when you value your uniqueness, you value other people's uniqueness. You don't value your uniqueness and look down other people's uniqueness. You are taking it the wrong way. So comparing your spouse is wrong in marriage. Don't ever compare your spouse to anybody. Okay? Learn to appreciate each other uniqueness. Learn to appreciate each other's uniqueness and, and learn to value it. Value your husband's uniqueness. Value your wife's uniqueness. It's very important. So remember, I gave us five signs of over-familiarity in marriage. One, how you talk to your husband, watch out for it. Number two, your response tone, watch out for it. Number three, belittle your husband, watch out for it. Number four, protect your husband's weaknesses. His weaknesses, protect it. His weaknesses. Number five, comparing your spouse in marriage is wrong. Those are the signs you have to look out for. Don't forget about the scriptures where they just go back and read the scriptures again. And you see the Holy Spirit working on it in your spirit. God bless you. Don't forget this is BBTV. We have a lot of good things coming our way. This is just the beginning. We are just on the scratch. We have not started. <laughs> Hallelujah. God has not started with us. We have a lot coming our way. As you have listened, may God give you wisdom to know how to respond to your spouse. May God give you wisdom not to delete your husband or your wife. May God give you wisdom to learn how to talk to your husband or your wife. May God give you wisdom to learn how to protect your spouse's weaknesses. May God give you wisdom never to, pro never to compare your, your spouse with anyone. God bless you. Have a blessed day. May God watch over our homes. May God keep our marriage safe. May God watch over our children. God bless you. Yeah, come your way again. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because you are the best. The best. God bless you.